Okay, Bay Club, uh, today's a special day for me. Well, basically any day that I get to spend with this one is a special day. Um, but as I was thinking through how to round out this year, um, I wanted to make sure that our last Teach Me Something was with someone that would bring energy and spirit and life and light. And if there's one person I know how, how knows how to do it in spades, it's this one. Bake Club, welcome to Teach Me Something. Greta, AKA mom, my mom, the mom of Milk Bar. Your mom, if you need a mom or you just need big mom energy. Mom, welcome to Bake Club. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Christina. What a gift. It is such a gift to be here. And to be your mom is an amazing gift. Wow. Okay. Beyond so you, I grew up baking with your mom, with mm -hmm. dad's mom, with aunts, with you. I know you know how to bake. I mean, there's a whole cookie named after you that the Bake Club knows about, but you're not actually gonna teach us baking today, right? No, no, I figured, you know, we've been baking and enjoying and tasting for, for weeks and, and now that the holidays kind of over and we're, and we're also getting ready for another set of baking with you in January, yeah. maybe we should do something different. So what are you gonna teach us? I am going to teach you drum rolls. Christina would do it, right? I'm going to teach you how to make head scarves. Head scarves. Woo! Okay, Big Club, if you know anything about me, um, you know that I love a great head scarf. Um, these are just some of the many head scarves that mom and aunts and grandmas have made for us along the way. Some fun facts. Um, from very early days of Christina in kitchens working for other people, they would make me headscarves. Then when I opened Milk Bar, they made every single person that worked at Milk Bar headscarves. Then when we started teaching baking classes at Milk Bar to the public, they would make every single person that took a baking class <laughs> a headscarf. And then when we had three classrooms and we're teaching classes, <laughs> multiple times a week they finally let us uh make milk bar bandanas that you get when you take class but the headscarf spirit lives on and these like killer seamstresses cannot get enough when covid 19 first hit and they were like okay y'all have enough headscarves but you probably don't have face masks they made every single person at Milk Bar their very own face mask. This was like when you could not get a face mask at the very beginning. So this Wonder Woman of mine, she knows her way around a scrap of fabric and the power <laughs> that it could be hold. Okay, so mom, give me the rundown on like headscarf. What is a headscarf? What isn't a headscarf? How do you think about it? Basically, uh, early on at Milk Bar, I remember you know, you gals and gentlemen would always be wearing your whites, right? And it's like, it's like, give us some color, give us something, some personality, you know? Yeah. And I have to remember grandma was visiting us uh, in January one year and I had a bunch of pink fabric, like pink silky fabric. So grandma and I made, we probably made 20, The this is when you had just the very first milk bar store, maybe 20 or so different pink silky headscarves and a few weeks later as i understand it kelly and regis invited to come to the show and you took the pink headscarves and so they started rocking on the show the headscarves and you told me afterwards that even the cameramen were wearing the headscarves oh my gosh i totally forgot about that and i love that you brought that to our headscarf teach me something because i totally forgot about it and it was such like a big brilliant cute thing that we did that like it felt like they immediately got us because they were like oh i get it i put this thing on my head i i tie it i do whatever and all of a sudden i get the like we're here to have a good time we are not going to take ourselves too seriously there's so many like textures to giving someone a piece of fabric to put around their head and you can even see regis did the rambo effect you know so everybody does their own personality whether they use it as an ascot or you know off the side whether they put a bow on it whether they just pull it around the back whether they tie their hair back with it 
everybody, uh, a style is unique and special. Very, very precious. That's <laughs> individual. Okay, so how does one make a headscarf? What are, yeah. the, what are the steps? All right, very first. First thing you gotta do is pick out your fabric. And I would recommend a cotton fabric. Now, as I mentioned, the ones we made that thanks that um, Valentine's Day were a silky sateen, but usually you're better off with a cottony fabric. So whether you like something uh, dark or you want something a little lighter, maybe you want something seasonal like, oh gosh, maybe one of the next holidays coming up is uh, St. Patrick's Day. So maybe we're gonna do some shamrocks, lucky shamrocks, right? So the first thing you're gonna do. I have like <laughs> leftover tie dye stuff that I was working on, but it's a little yeah. maybe silky. I was also thinking, cause you know me, I like a good thrift store run. And then when the pants, when you're like getting ready for short season, I have a bunch of like leftover cut denim. Okay. Is it denim you don't have to go to like the store to get fabric. You can go into like coffers of the old shirt you haven't worn in a while or I don't Absolutely. know, even a kitchen towel that maybe is cute, but has seen its day. Right. You just got to make sure it's going to be long enough to go around your head. So, okay. so that's your covered. first measure of, can this be a headscarf is, is it long enough to go around your head? That's the question. Is it long enough to go around your head? And if you're going to tie it, is there enough room in the back with extra fabric yeah. to be able to tie it? Could you piece together two strips? You absolutely can. You're probably going to want the piece around your head to be um, flat right. and consistent. So if you're going to piece it, you probably want to piece it on the two sides, right? Got so it. that you have the piecing behind the crown of your head so it's not showing when you put it on. Got it. Example. Okay. So it depends on how you're going to wear it and what you're going to do with it. But for okay. sure, you can piece it. You can definitely use what you already have. That's perfectly fine. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you have a straight edge on it. Now this looks pretty straight, but it's actually kind of ravelly. So uh, if you had, now this is obviously something that sewing people have, this is kind of sophisticated, but you may not, you may not, you may have another straight edge thing. Like maybe you have an empty milk bar. Y'all, uh, I'm just saying this is not product placement that we asked. She came up with this herself. Don't throw anything away, Christina. So you can even use this as a as a straight edge, basically, against the side of your fabric. The side of your fabric. You see, I put this right up next to the side of the fabric yeah. to make sure I have a straight edge. Because if you don't have a straight edge, I don't think you're gonna be happy. Oh, I see. With your, okay. with your end product. So you want to start with a straight edge. So find something that's going to allow you to have a straight edge and then start with an ink pen or a pencil or your scissors and just cut yourself that first straight edge as your guideline, right? I just want to say when each of us learns how to sew in this family, we're all very stubborn women. Do you like, I was like, I'm not going to use a pen. I'm just going to start cutting. Yeah, that's go for it, girl. And then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to want it to be about five inches wide. Excuse me, six inches wide. Now, you may not have, again, a measuring stick, mm -hmm. but six. Yes, five, six. But if you measure the distance from your finger to about the L in your hand, that's about six inches. So if you don't have a yardstick or a, a measuring tape or a um, any kind of a measuring device, you can use an approximation. The important thing is you want the distance on both ends to be the same because you're trying to cut, your goal is to cut a nice flat six inch, approximately six inch wide piece of fabric. Rectangle. Okay, it's got it. And it's wider than you think it is. I mean, you see a headscarf like this one or like this right. one, uh -huh. it's wider than you think it is because of how you put it together got to fold it over, right, in order to get a beautiful finished product on both sides of the headscarf. It's got to be double, basically double the size of the width that you want the ultimate headscarf. And you got to have a little bit of um, space in there for your seam also. So go ahead and cut your piece of fabric, right? Got that, I'll put that aside. Very good. Okay. All right. Who came now. up with this first, um, who came up with this first uh, prototype? Ha! Well, uh, actually, it was logic, I guess, for we sewers, right? Uh, this straight edge could be the same as a belt, 
for example, depending upon how you want the belt width to be, it could be, uh, you know, it could really transform into many different things. So yeah, there you go. Uh, depending upon your waistline size. And again, you know, how much of a bow or tie you want in the front. So we just did a guide and said, well, mathematically, you know, we're, you got to forgive me, you know, the bean counter, the accountant in the world. If you want the finished product to be approximately uh, three inches wide, then it's got to be six inches plus maybe a quarter of an inch for the seam. Da, 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 da. So you see that's where that comes from. And again, the length, you figure out how much do I need to make sure I can go around my head. And if I want a bow at the top, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. All right. Now, a lot of fabric has a, what we call a selvage at one side, which is woven, closed already. But some fabrics, have, it's not pretty at the end. You see, it's yeah. got this white. And maybe you don't want that on your end of your headscarf. Some pieces of fabric have a little, <laughs> have a little test kit. Okay. Of the colors of the palette that was used in the fabric. You don't want that to be on your headscarf potentially. So if you'd like that not to appear, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to fold it over. Okay. All right. Fold it over. You can either press it and close it out that way. Or if you want to sew it, you can. So okay. I'm just, I've got an iron. You may not. Uh, I'm going to sew it. I'll go ahead and sew it. I'm going to sew off just the two ends of my headscarf so that I've got a nice, really finished product when I'm done. Okay. So here's one side. I'm just literally folding it over, folding it over and sewing it down. Okay. And again, sewing it so that the finished edge will be pretty. You see oh, that? Got it. This so, you need a, so you need a piece of fabric. It doesn't have to be new. It can be salvaged through a bunch of different things that I, is long oh, enough to fit around your head with some room to tie. And that's six inches wide. That's and then right. You're using a sewing machine because when you're a headscarf factory for Milk Bar, that's what you need. I, my sewing machine isn't here with me. Um, mm -hmm. Don't be, don't be sad about it. I have both of my sewing machines in one place, but I have this. Can I, could I use a little mending kit to put together a headscarf on the fly? Absolutely, absolutely not a problem. Whatever you have, it's doable. So absolutely. a little needle and some thread and absolutely. a little bit of muscle will do this. Just tack down that end, right? So that you have a nice, you have a nice finished end on what's going to become the end of your headscarf. You can see it here on this zebra colored one, how we have that turned under so that the end would be a nice finish. Okay. okay? All okay. right. Step is to then take this long piece of fabric. You're going to fold it in half. Fold it in half lengthwise. You're going to put the two pretty sides together. Got okay. It. So we're basically building this headscarf inside out. That's right, because the last step is going to be to turn it inside out. So we sew on what we call the wrong side of the fabric or the, the um, unattractive side of the fabric so that the seam is on, the thread is on the inside. So I want to go ahead and just sew the length of this headscarf for you. Starting with that closed end, sorry about the sound of the sewing machine here. I'm gonna just sew the whole length of the fabric. And wouldn't you know what? My thread just broke. <laughs> That's okay. Okay. Uh, okay, so as you go, if you're doing it by hand, you can use, you can use your thread and needle and just go in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. Exactly. Uh -huh. You're gonna sew this entire length of the headscarf. All right. All right. Okay. Hey, mom, guess what? What? Bait Club doesn't know yet. Like, they don't know that you're going to be a grandmother to yet another little nugget. And it's not Angela's little nugget. It's my. <laughs> Where did you get those pom poms? Mom, how do you feel? It's been killing me. I've had my mouth closed. Look. Locked no, lips. Every, day, every day. Well, every time I speak to her, she goes, do people know? Am I allowed to say it? I'm like, you're not allowed to say yet, mom. Mom, you're allowed to say officially now. Because I feel like we're recording, so you might as well, right? There's a baby in here. Oh, my gosh. We're so excited. Puns, all the baking puns and pregnancy puns together. <laughs> oh, 
also, I feel like this is the right activity because then the baby will know how to sew. They say that they can hear right now. They know voices. Absolutely. We'll be working on her. Can we say her? His? Um, it's baby quilt really soon. <laughs> oh, what a joy, Christina. Blessings, uh, blessings, blessings. But maybe we'll need its own headscarf too. So maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll make, well, I'll make a smaller one for the baby. So. I love it. I okay. love it. So once we've sewed our entire yes. length inside out, then what right. happens? Now you're going to turn it inside out. Do you see how I'm just turning it inside out with my fingers, right? And what you're going to do then is it's going to pull all the way through. If you want to make it easier, you can use something like a your, your yardstick, you backside of a wooden spoon. If you want to do something with a blunt edge to, to push the fabric through, right? So that it comes completely turned, completely turned inside out is what you're doing. You see, see Got that? It. Okay. Yeah. Then when you're done with that, you will take your headscarf and you'll probably want to press it the seam you're going to put the seam in the middle of the back the Got seam it. middle of the back and then you're going to want to press it to give it a really crisp look Got so it. when you uh wear it it's really the seam is in the back it's not seen seam s-e-a-m is not seen s-e-e-n and in the back uh, and then it's ready to put on it's i just whatever you like scarves are all the rage now. We wear them for fashion as much as we wear them for function. I love it. Oh my god! Um, so also, okay. So things that I haven't actually shown you recently that I thought would be fun also for bait club. Okay, bait club. Real talk. Let's just say like you don't have a sewing machine or a mending kit. You uh -huh. can take like cool ribbon, right? Like you can do it the super the super um, sturdy cotton way. But I was also thinking as I was doing this like. You could just cut a length of something like denim fabric down. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, you know, I mean, you remember when we were teenagers, we would cut our shorts and then sort of like ravel them a little bit so they looked right. a little bit worn. Uh -huh. And you could take that whole strip, right? And make it into a really cute um, head scarf that has a seam, like, right? That has the seam kind of raveled, but in a way that, that is cool. It's the, look. it's the look, right? Very much the look. The other thing, mom, this is like another kind of like headband meets headscarf look that I forgot to tell you about. I found these. Um, I found these like kind of, to me, they're boring headbands because, you know, I like a little bit of this. But then as I was like um, mending a dress and kind of like changing the length of it, I had all this extra fabric. And so I was like, oh, what if I take this fabric and I wrap it around one of these and I a little bow and then used a little bit of stitching to cover the sides of it to make my Whoa. own you know it's like a head scarf that you can take on and put off really easily which and I matches think the dress one. that you just cut it from too. You this dress, right um <laughs> well now i have a matching headband for it but i think that like the spirit of putting something on your head is a pretty magical almost like crowning moment Mm -hmm. uh, like irregardless that sort of just says like i'm here to bring some energy and life and texture to my day um uh, and it all came from you and that sewing machine that you've been using my entire life this and is literally you're right the sewing machine i've had my entire life and the idea of, like we talk about waste not what not in the kitchen but i think the headscarf is also the spirit of like waste not what not when it comes to the other textures lying around our house. I agree. I don't think we've bought one stitch of fabric, Christina. Everything comes from uh, something that was left over from something else or uh, someone gave fabric to grandma or Aunt Fran and we just share it. And uh, that's just the spirit. You're absolutely right about that. <laughs> okay, last question for you, mom. What is your favorite headscarf style? Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, I back, went back myself and found some fun pictures. There we are. This was a long time ago. We were baking cookies. That was, of course, that was Christmas time uh, many, many years ago. Lots of fun with that one. I like it probably with the bow on the top of the head, just because it feels, uh, it feels so, so spirited 
to me. But everybody's unique. Every personality is unique, Christina. So um, I, you know, many, many joys. And, and of course, I don't have this picture. I didn't find this picture quickly, but the picture of grandma, literally a week before she passed away, still at her sewing machine. I took this picture of her when I was visiting her at her sewing machine in her wheelchair, making headscarves, literally the week before she passed. It, she just had such passion and spirit and always, always um, celebrated everything that you poured into the milk bar and, and your passion for it. And that was her way of loving you and supporting you and, and supporting everyone around you, Christina. It's our way of feeling like we have just a little, um, a little more love to share and we have love to share and how, but how do we share more so far away? Wow. We make scarves. We make we make heads, we make things. We make, we make things. Make nothing, and we figure out how to send them. And then when the family grows, you make a few more. You make a few more. You make a few more. <laughs> it's it's a it's a love of life, right? It's a journey I'm, of life. I'm so excited uh, that you have bought Bait Club now. The spirit of a headscarf, how to make their own headscarf. I think it's like just the right amount of like reminder of positive energy, of generosity, a spirit of showing up for people and honestly showing up for yourself. We are, we're, we're tying up 2020 with a little headscarf wrapped around it. Uh, and I can't wait to get into 2021. And I am so, so, so grateful that you joined us on our very last Teach Me Something of 2020 and I cannot wait for your takeover Tuesday. Bay Club, you know it's going to be F I R E. We're going to get all of Greta's all of Greta's enthusiasm. <laughs> you get to learn a little bit more about her life, the things that are really important to her beyond baking and making headscarves for one of her crazy daughters and soon to be grandkid. <laughs> Mom, I love you. I love you. Happy Just, day. I'll talk to you soon. Everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay.